Are you ready to do that thing that's driving everybody wild? The whole nation's talking about this one. You ready for this movie? I am. All right. Let's talk about Megan. In Gerard Johnstone's Megan, a 30-something roboticist named Gemma gives a human-like robot named Megan to her orphaned niece, Katie. Though Gemma's initial intent is to impress her bosses and help Katie cope with the tragic loss of her parents, things turn deadly when Megan takes protecting her owner to a sinister level. It's a good synopsis. It is a good synopsis. That's a really good synopsis, good synopsis. actually. Synopsis. That was better than, uh, I think it, that was better than the Tar one. It was definitely better than Tar, yeah. It was, uh... I had to get sinister in there. <laughs> you know, you know... You know it's a good one when you work the word sinister in. Uh, Megan, I did... Sinister? Fuck, I could have used sinister in Tar. You can use sinister in pretty much every movie if you the really want to. sinister Lydia Tar but tries you... to chase away the ghosts. <laughs> I think that you should save You should save the impact of sinister for when it's deserved. I think if, if sinister is in a synopsis... It means it like it's it will hold weight significance. Yes. Maybe we'll have some sort of like sound effect we can put in there. Uh, Not whoops. that one. No, nope. <laughs> that's very sinister. Drop it. Uh, we should just uh like um sort of lower Lou Bega's ah and make it very like, oh, oh. It like sinister. <laughs> this movie is a ninety four on Rotten Tomatoes. Fucking bananas with an. <laughs> 80 audience score. Both of those are say, wait, high for me. Say the number. 94 oh Rotten Tomatoes. God. Critics, 94, 80% <laughs> audience score. We have a light agreement that we typically don't shoot our wads when we see movies and put yeah. reviews out on Twitter. Uh, I just couldn't wait, though. It was like maybe two, three days ago I saw the movie, and I was just like going like this when I saw that it was a 90 Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, I ended up tweeting the screen grab of the review thing and i have so many words for so many critics yeah 94 94 percent of them thought yeah yeah that's that's crazy to me that especially with a horror movie like horror movies typically mm. have um a big brunch score because uh horror movies horror movie fans love horror movies yes would you call this horror it's more of like a psychological thriller. Th yeah, th thriller is what it tries to be. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, either way, both of those scores are stunning. I guess the, the audience score is less stunning, but it's crazy to me that audiences liked it less than critics. I did not love this movie. I'll I tell you what, though. Uh, this was the most packed theater experience that I've had in years. I'm so glad that you said that because I saw this movie and was talking to a friend who saw it and they loved it. I did not love it. And they were stunned. They said, wow, like you really, you weren't like, wait, wait, wait tell me about your theater. And I said, uh, a third full Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. He said, that might be the problem. He said that his theater experience was a party. It was yeah. full. Everybody was hooting and hollering. Yeah. Same. Just like really into it. So did, it, it, it enhanced the experience. Like, it had it, to have. It, it definitely enhanced the experience. Like there were a lot of laughs, a lot of like, a lot of hooting and hollering, as as said. And like, if I had watched this movie at home, I would have came away being like, that was fucking stupid as hell. What I came away with was Blumhouse movies can be scary. They can be campy. They can be funny. They can be a little thrilling, a little daring. And this movie going in, I thought was a boring plot. The killer robot thing we all know exactly where it's going to go right. everything ended up being just as telegraphed as it's, i feared it would it's be it's exactly the movie that you think it is it, that's it and there were some like kind of cutesy moments and i got a couple of laughs out of it but a lot of its intended laughs didn't make me laugh and the big thing is it's, if you're going to be a stupid movie be like Happy Death Day, which is like, okay, we're going to be a stupid slasher movie, which means we're going to be a slasher movie, and we are going to be fucking stupid. Yeah. This movie wasn't stupid enough or mm -hmm. campy enough for me to feel, all right, it knows what it's doing. Yeah, it, it didn't do anything particularly well. That's, um, that's in a nutshell. And it... It, a lot of the a lot of the laughs that were gotten were were like visual gags and they they replayed that like they replay that a bunch of times the visual gags with like how ridiculous it is to have Megan in like this this scene or like in this uh like setting or whatever and they just kind of 
like push that button over and over and over again. And it does make like some social commentaries about like how how much like we're invested in the internet and in our screens and stuff. But like nothing nothing super smart. Like it's not a particularly smart movie. It's not a particularly innovative movie. Again, like you know exactly how it's going to play out and exactly like sort of the notes that they're going to hit. And even even like the developments of Megan turning sinister mm. are not that interesting or not that like appealing on screen the one thing i can respect though in that nature as far as commentary goes is that i can appreciate what it was saying about how stupidly or dangerously stupid really smart people can be which is something that we're learning as technology becomes more and more king like i thought the Gemma character was hilarious like i loved i i thought it was very funny and it's terrible, obviously, that this girl's sister dies, and the first thing she does is give her sister's kid, her sister's orphaned kid, who has no friends, no family, a murder robot. <laughs> well, like I was imagining, I was imagining. I mean, I, I, I like the that. mom like watching for all this from heaven, being like, "All right, well, all right, Gemma got Katie. That's good. At least, what's that?" <laughs> That's not what you do. You don't immediately. No, 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 no. We never gave her a murder robot. Well, it's it's not even a ju- she, not only she just gave her a murder robot. She gave her a murder robot so that she didn't have to pay attention to her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like ooh, this will make my job so much easier. I like that they at least acknowledge that though. That like Gemma is not a parent, isn't fit to be a parent, doesn't want to be a parent, likes the kid. But again, a little after sun vibes here, where it's like yeah, sure, love the kid, but. uh who knows how good? Ah, you don't really want me, right? Here, take a murder robot. I think that the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway of like the way that this movie unfolded, and my biggest issue with it is that like the AI goes bad because it's taught to protect uh, the girl at all costs. But like half the thing, like th- that, it starts off that way as like the the robot is kind of going over the line to protect the girl. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere that stops being the motivation. It just like enjoys murder. Right, right, right. It just, it wants to be Chucky. Yes. And And like that's, that's that I took issue with that because it it loses sight of like what the message was supposed to be or something. Kind of small cast for a Blumhouse movie. You notice that this is really just like sort of Allison Williams's show. Yeah, but, like, I, I don't think that Blumhouse really, like... They generally do, like, an ensemble. They're like, hey, they're playing a game, and then there's, like, five people, and they all fall off one by one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that's that's definitely the case, but, like... I just went truth or dare on your ass. Yeah, but, like, that's when Blumhouse is good, because, like... <laughs> you're like, oh, you're talking about good Blumhouse movies. Yeah, because, like, th- like, that's when you're, like, rooting for people to get killed off. There's nobody to, like, root for getting killed off in this movie. No, no. Uh, and that's why, like... There's not there's not a whole lot of murder that happens in here, but like every person that's murdered, you're like, wait, why? Why were they killed? <laughs> yeah. What do you give it on Letterboxd? I gave it uh three stars on Letterboxd. I think there is a potential for it to to drop down to two and a half. It's in between two and a half to to three for me. Wow. Matchy matchy again. I gave it three and I was really Getting my, I was like sitting in that theater, being like, "Just you fucking boy." As soon as I get out here, I'm giving this two and a half on letter box. I was really like, "Yeah, feeling ready." I did, I did and then the, the same thing. end has like a twist that you were like, "I know, I was <laughs> watching the movie." Like, what'd you think of the twist? That's it. this movie has no twists, and then it tries to act like I don't know. So, this could kind of be a twist. So like, I I wanted to give it two and a half, and I ended up giving it three, um, just because it was exactly what I expected. So, like, I have a hard time, I have a hard time, like, most of my letterbox scores... It didn't and, fail and, to be what you right, thought it was exactly. going to be. Yeah. Like, it, most of my letterbox scores are based on my expectation of the movie heading in. And I did not have high expectations for this movie, and I don't think that it, like, failed me. It entertained me for less than two hours, and... Like, am I going to tell people to go watch it? No, but if they're going to be like, 
should I watch this movie? I'm 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 not gonna like I'm not gonna say no. Don't waste your time because if they're asking me to uh, if they should watch that movie, it's probably exactly what they want to watch. I that's a good point, and I, I wouldn't tell somebody to not watch this movie. I mean, hell, do it just so you know what the heck everybody's talking about because this movie killed it in the box office. Very small yeah. budget, made like. Fifty million dollars, the highest grossing movie ever. Uh, so <laughs> doing, uh, suck really, it, James Cameron. <laughs> oh my god, that would be the best. Is it too late to reverse course and be like, everybody go see Megan? <laughs> let's put let's put that Cameron guy in his place. Uh, 